The Malibu case is one of the biggest scandals in the history of the oil industry. Two international oil companies, Eni and Shell, acquired the rights to OPL 245, a block in deep water offshore. The story of Nigeria's sleaziest oil deal. Andrew Obaji, then director of the Department of Petroleum Resources, was strongly opposed to the resolution agreement the federal government signed with Malabu and Shell in April 2011. He described the resolution agreement as prejudicial to the interests of the federal government. He questioned INI's involvement in the resolution agreement and asked why Malabu should be paid when it had not fully remitted the price of the block, part of the requirements of the settlement reached in 2006. Obaje also warned the then Minister of Justice, Mohamed Adoki, of weakening the country's stance in existing court cases and opening up more case files. Andrew Obaje was a lone night watcher. Unfortunately, uh, we should um, pray for the repose of the soul of um, Andrew Obaje. It's unfortunate that he is late now. Uh, th th that is one of the most crucial, you know, outstanding Nigerian with um, enormous, you know, uh, wealth of knowledge in the oil and gas operation and an upright, you know, uh, gentleman who actually stood up, you know, when it was most crucial uh, to be counted uh, as um, not only a patriot but also as a bureaucrat. Uh, the resolution agreement from all uh, revelation now and insight into some confidential documents uh, that were leaked on, uh, by media houses. It's um, <clears throat> now clear that those resolution agreements were actually drafted for Nigeria, a sovereign nation, by the oil companies. You know, uh, it, it was a product that really did not emanate from either the Nigerian Ministry of Justice or the Nigerian Ministry of Petroleum Resources. And it was after the drafting and completed drafting of it uh, that the Ministry of um, Justice uh, uh, under the control of uh, Mohamed Adoke tried to get some measure of you know, legitimacy. The resolution agreement was a six-party deal between the federal government of Nigeria Malabu Oil and Gas, Royal Dutch Shell, and two of its Nigerian subsidiaries, Shell Nigeria Ultra Deep Limited, SNOD, and Shell Nigeria Exploration Production Company, SNEPCO, and its IMI were also part of the deal, not forgetting the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC. Two years after Obaje's prediction of more litigation, the Milan prosecutor opened preliminary investigation against Shell, INI, and some of their top officials in Milan, Italy. I mean, since 2013, the Public Prosecutor Office in Milan has been investigating the OPL 245 case, uh, in particularly the um, international corruption dimension of it, um, on which um, the Milan Prosecutor has jurisdiction because ENI is legally registered, the Italian oil major, both in Milan and Rome. And in, at the end of 2016, so after a long investigation, he wrote up the case and basically requested the opening of the trial. And in 2017, the preliminary hearing uh, with the judge had to decide whether enough evidence was there to opening the case. And uh, basically, uh, at the end of that year, the, the decision arrived that in several individuals and the two companies were sent on trial for uh, aggravated international corruption. We are talking about both Annie and Shell as legal entities, as well the former CEO of Annie, Paolo Scaroni, and the current CEO of Annie, Claudio Descalzi, who at the time of the deal, he was the number two in the company. As well, uh, Marco Brindet of Shell was the number two dealing with the upstream in Shell at the time of the deal. And then we have several managers of uh, both companies, as well as uh, uh, relevant middlemen, both from um, Italy and Nigeria. And 
For instance, uh, Mr. Abu Bakar Aliyu, uh, I guess uh, all the audience will know who he is, and similarly Luigi Bisignani, already convicted in Italy, and uh, another middleman. So this is definitely an historical trial we started in Milan, and it's historical because it's the first time for Shell. Any has already been on trial, the company has already been convicted, in particular subsidiary, controlled by the company for the Bonny Island scandal that uh, I'm sure all the Nigerians would remember. The investigation by the Milan prosecutor exposed a cache of mills between Shell Petroleum Development Company, SPDC, Snepco, their parent company, RDS, and INI. 2010, we're engaging and considering a deal where, despite they had to call it a production sharing contract, in reality, they were uh, um, basically uh, trying to formulate fiscal terms which were completely excluding the Nigerian government. What you might call basically a production non sharing contract because ultimately the profit oil was not going to the Nigerian government. Of course, uh, this was, was a long negotiation. We know there were many players in this negotiation, but it's hard to deny that they were not aware that this was part of their negotiating strategy. Um, they got it. Uh, I think this, this is definitely at the, at the producing a damage for the Nigerian people, and so it, it's very important. That